Brian Kelly hauling in a near top 10 recruiting class with three uh, signees this afternoon that proved key. We bring in uh, Kevin Sinclair from Slap the Sign on the Fan Sided uh, Network for Notre Dame. Uh, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us. We know you're on the West Coast and it's been an early and long day for you, but uh, the Irish have kind of paid it off. Yeah, they certainly have. It's been a big day for Notre Dame, big week for Notre Dame. Uh, this morning, uh, Notre Dame had uh, the first uh, call pretty early from Hawaii. Uh, I was Myron uh, Tago Veoa. Uh, Amosa, defensive end, six foot four, two hundred seventy-five pounds. Notre Dame is a big need at first. Uh, the defensive end, uh, they've kind of struggled with that over the last few years. Uh, the thing that's uh, impressive about him is that he also plays some three technique defensive. So they're looking for some rovers. He fits the bill perfectly there. Uh, he's got a, a, a very impressive film. Uh, he's listed as a four-star by some services, three-star with others. Uh, but I look at him as a very impressive player. Actually, one of my favorite in the whole class. Uh, Fifteen minutes after that, they also got a call from Kofi Wardlow, another defensive end. So that's three uh, really solid defensive players to sort of round out their class. Um, Kofi Wardlow is a six-foot-three, two hundred and thirty-pound defensive end out of Washington D.C. Uh, they just offered him a few weeks ago. Uh, they visited him in his home, also at his school, and he uh, had a, an official visit at Notre Dame a few weekends ago. Last weekend, he visited Virginia Tech, so there was a lot of questions, a lot of speculation about where he was going to go. Things weren't looking that great for Notre Dame, but today he committed, and that's great. I gave him a, their 21st commitment. With one fifth-year senior, it's going to look like they're going to hit right on that 85 mark, something that they have struggled with uh, year after year. Um, getting back into further in the week, they were sitting a, a, a week ago today, they were sitting at 15 commitments. Uh, a lot of people were wondering if they were going to get any more. Uh, Jordan Genmark Heath started with the, the flip from Cal. From Cal. Uh, he's a safety out of San Diego. Uh, Four-star, he's sort of uh, been jumping the ranks as of late. Uh, won a state championship with California uh, – sorry, the state championship in uh, Div 1 AA California this year. Uh, he's an interesting story, kid. He's got uh, Ivy League uh, scholarship offers. He was born and raised in Sweden, which is really interesting. Uh, they also got receiver Jafar Armstrong out of, uh, out of um, Kansas City, Missouri, it was a really important commitment because they didn't have any true wide receivers in the class yet. So you don't want to be going uh, without a positional group in a class uh, for any year. Uh, uh, right after that was a really surprising commit with that Jonathan Dorer. He's a kicker out of South Carolina, one of the better kickers in the country. This caught me by surprise as uh, Notre Dame has uh, – a really solid kicker, just finished his sophomore year. He was the number one kicker in the country coming out of high school. Uh, I looked into it right after that, and it looks like he's going to miss some of or all of spring ball with tendonitis in his knee, just immune, that is. So it looks like uh, this new kicker, Jonathan Dorr, is going to come in. It's going to relieve him there. And then into this season, he's probably going to be handing kickoff duties. He's uh, in his senior season – for his uh, high school in South Carolina, he had a 90 percentile uh, touchback off the kickoffs uh, percentage. So looks like that will probably alleviate Justin Yoon's knee and his tendonitis issues in that. So look, that uh, sort of caps off the last six commitments that Notre Dame's gotten this week. And uh, ND fans are real excited about that after a real sour year. All right, Kevin. So as you mentioned, that's 21 commits. It was only 15 about a week ago. So Brian Kelly closing strong with three this week. You highlighted uh, all six that have come in over the past week, three today. Uh, when you look at the entirety of the class, 10 four stars included, uh, a near top 10 ranking. Uh, can you give us a feel for what needs have been addressed and who you really like here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would start with the tight ends. Notre Dame's got Brock Wright, the number one tight end in the country, and Colt Komet, number three tight end in the, in the country. Both are all Americans. Uh, they're, they both signed their letters of intent, obviously. Uh, they joined uh, the, the Notre Dame tight end room this year. It'll be six tight ends, five of which are former high school All-Americans. 
It's very impressive. Also, uh, with the offensive line, uh, Notre Dame got another really good haul with their offensive line coach, Harry Heastan, one of the best in the business. They got to, I think they're the only the only uh, program in the country to sign three rivals top 150 offensive linemen. Last time I checked, Robert Hainsey out of IMG Academy, an Under Armour All-American, Aaron Banks out of El Cerrito, California, and Josh Lug out of Pennsylvania. Uh, all project to be really good uh, college offensive linemen. They also got a, a three-star kind of diamond in the rough offensive lineman, Dylan Gibbons out of Florida. Um, they also uh, have pretty good skill positions players. They got Avery Davis, quarterback out of Texas, CJ Holmes, really solid running back out of Cheshire Academy in Connecticut. A couple good linebackers, David Adams and Drew White. Uh, Drew White comes out of uh, – St. Thomas Aquinas in, in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. He's a 70 Florida All-State linebacker, captain of the defense. That's one of the best programs in the country. Darnell Ewell's considered a, a crown jewel of the class by a lot of people. Uh, he's a, a four-star top 150 defensive tackle out of Virginia, you know, 300 pounds, real, real strong physical specimen there. Uh, I've also got Isaiah Robertson, free safety out of Illinois. He's an early enrollee, looks to get involved in kind of a thin free safety depth chart there. Um, also, uh, we've got, um, sorry, just drawing a blank there, Kurt Hinnish, uh, also out of Pennsylvania. He's Drew, uh, sorry, David Adams, the linebacker's teammate, uh, 6'3", 285 pounds. Really, really excited about him. Um, also slot receiver, Michael Young out of Louisiana, really dynamic player. A lot of recruiting services think that he's, uh, probably the, the diamond in the rough player in the class for Notre Dame, big time playmaker. So that, uh, that rounds out the class. Um, the only thing uh, that's kind of pressing or concerning is they didn't land a cornerback. They had Paulson Adebo and Elijah Hicks decommit, uh, in the month of January, he made a big push for All-American Russ Heast, who's an in-state player. Uh, he was already committed to Louisville and wasn't uh, willing to sway from that commitment. And he uh, committed to them, or, or he signed his letter of intent with them early this morning. Yeah, it's a defense that uh, obviously hit its peak in 2012 with Manti Teo and company giving up just uh, about 150 or 60 points for the entire season. And it's uh, progressively declined since then and kind of bottomed out or Notre Dame fans hope that it bottomed out in 2016. But uh, hopefully some help is on the way. A fine class for Brian Kelly at uh, number 11 in the nation, according to 24-7's Composite. Uh, Kevin Sinclair from uh, Slap the Sign. You can catch him there on the fan sided network for Notre Dame. Uh, updating us on a Notre Dame football and, of course, it's recruiting season. So I'm sure, Kevin, you will have plenty uh, uh, for us to uh, read and take in in regards to this uh, signing class right there. Absolutely. Yep. Daily articles.